the only thing that's yes is yes. Just because there's no no, that doesn't mean there's a yes. Right? In order for it to be yes, there has to be something said. A consent has to be created. Right? Now, there's a name for my, for my view. It's called the affirmative consent standard. For there to be consent, there must be some affirmation. Consent must be created. Right? When I think of this, I think of something my driver's ed teacher said to me while I was learning to drive a car. Now, I took driver's ed when I was 17. I'm now 59. So this has stayed with me for a considerable number of years. Okay? We were discussing the principle of the right of way. And my driver's ed teacher said, the right of way is not something you have. The right of way is something the other driver gives you. And if the other driver doesn't give it to you, you don't have it. No matter what you think the rules of the road are supposed to be or what you think you're entitled to. And if people really understood that, there would be a lot fewer tragic collisions on the roads. Consent is like that. Right? Consent is not something you have. Consent is something the other person has to give you. And if the other person doesn't give it to you, you don't have it, no matter what you think the rules are supposed to be or what you think you're entitled to. Right? That's the affirmative consent standard. Now, here's my sort of bottom line for endorsing that and recommending it to you. Often in philosophy, the way to decide on one position is to see there's a fork in the road, and what happens if we take the other view? Right? If you don't have the affirmative consent standard, you are saying that what's in place is green light. Go ahead. Right? If you don't have the affirmative consent standard, standard, you are endorsing a world in which other people have right of access to your body without expressly asking you for permission to have that access. That's what you are saying if you don't endorse an affirmative consent standard. If you say the default mode is go ahead until somebody stops me, un until there's a stop, right? I think if we really think about it, no one is really willing to live in a world like that. I don't think any of us would really endorse the lack of an affirmative consent standard if we really understood what's at stake. So that's my bottom line here. Now I'm going to spell out some other implications, some other aspects of this. I said consent has to be created. Something has to be said. Someone raised the issue of body language. Right? I'm going to hold out for the standard what's required is explicit verbal consent. Okay. That's the standard I'm going to, to, to hold out for. Um, the danger in body language is that it's just too easily misinterpreted. Okay. And if you misinterpret, if you get it wrong, if you're reading someone's body language and you think you have consent when you really don't, we need to start using language of directly talking about what we're talking about. We're talking about sexual assault. We're talking about rape. I am not accusing people of intentionally misinterpreting. So these are situations where emotions are running high. Things may be getting hot and heavy. Huh? It may be very too easy to read in a misinterpretation of the signals in all good faith. I really thought. Okay? It's just too dangerous.